All right, so we're gonna talk about sway bars. Um, today, I'm just gonna go over just the basics of it and the basics of sway bar length, lengths. All right, so what a sway bar does is it's a piece of sprung steel that mounts to the frame and to the axle to control the suspension on body roll or uh, feeling like you're gonna tip over, you know, driving down the road. Some Jeeps, you can take them all the way off and you don't even notice that, that you took them off. Jeeps like a JK or a JL, you take them off, you're definitely gonna notice it's gonna get a lot of body roll and it's, it's gonna be very loose, not a very fun driving experience. Now, what happens though is we got a sway bar link right here. We're gonna have two joints on that because that moves as the suspension moves. If we put a lift kit in it and we put bigger springs in, the sway bar link is gonna be, the length of that is determined by your ride height. What I'm saying is when we lift that and raise that vehicle up, if we don't put a longer sway bar link in there or an adjustable one for that matter, that sway bar is gonna sit at much steeper angle. Now there's two bad things about that. Number one is the right of it. It, it's it's not very well because a lot of that force is going to be getting pushed up even through that sway bar and it's kind of crazy that a sway bar link could cause a bad ride but it definitely can the next thing behind that is when that suspension goes all the way down if we don't put a longer sway bar link in there we're risking inversion inversion is going to be the worst thing we can worry about on a sway bar because what happens is as that suspension moves down it gets to a point where the sway bar link and the sway bar will be lined straight up that's not a not a good situation because it's going to do two things. It's going to go either go back right to where it was and you got lucky or it inverts. And once that thing comes around and inverts, it's going to take out the steering. It's going to be wedged. I've seen it on the trails before. It's, 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 it's a bad day. Usually it either, either breaks something or you have to find a way to either cut it apart or find a way to get it back in there. And that's all because of um, poor suspension design at that point. Now these principles work on both the front and the rear. So I wanna see my sway bar either at least flat or maybe even a little rake, rake upwards if I have a ton of down travel. So when we're looking at a, buying a new suspension system for our Jeep, that's one component that we're definitely gonna to wanna to look over when we're looking at kits to make sure that it's in there. If it's not in there, then we're gonna to have to buy that additionally because it really needs to be addressed. Um, we see lots of Jeeps come in the shop that somebody threw a quick lift kit, a budget boost or whatever, and there's so many compromises at that point that you're, if you take that thing off road, you're like you say, you're gonna risk inversion if it doesn't have longer sway bar links in it. So look the kit over. We're gonna wanna look for either like adjustable sway bar links or a sway bar link that's longer that was designed for that suspension system and that, and that ride height, but it definitely needs to be addressed because that's one of the main components to getting a full suspension. We're gonna look for springs, we're gonna look for shocks, extended bump stops, some caster adjustment, adjustable track bar, a track bar bracket in the rear. I mean, it's getting to be, it's a lot of components, but if we understand what those components are doing, it makes looking through this whole sea of, of parts and all this stuff that's very, you know, there's a lot of options out there. It, it's gonna help you narrow down exactly what's gonna work best for you. Now, we could go with a fixed longer, sway bar link in there these are disconnects so we can disconnect them and then it lets the suspension free travel all the way uh when it's off road and then we can hook them right back up and it's a lot tighter when we're driving it on the road but some form or another we have to have a longer sway bar link in there when we lift the vehicle a lot of times it, it matters if if we're gonna run you know two or three inches of lift it's it's not gonna be as long as when we're running six inches of lift or anything like that all of that works in, in unison, so the higher the ride height, the higher we're gonna have to get that sway bar length to mount in there. All right, so I'm not some crazy rock crawler. I'm, I just drive it on the road, take it to Starbucks. I, I, don't, you know, I don't need this. Well, absolutely do, because it's gonna affect your ride quality. If we take this bar right there and we start going down at a steeper angle, as that suspension moves up, you're putting more deflection straight into that bar and you're gonna feel it through the frame. It, your ride quality is definitely gonna be affected at that point compared to having it set up all the geometry correct the way we wanna see it and the way we wanna see the Jeep operate. Let's take a look at the whiteboard. So, the sway bar's gonna hook onto the frame as it goes across the frame to both sides. Sway bar's gonna come out here, your sway bar link is gonna connect down to the axle. Now, as this axle and the suspension moves up and down, so does Obviously this joint gets closer together, comes apart. This is pretty much a, a good um, length of a joint right there. If 
that sway bar length was shorter though, it was down here, you can see how as that suspension moved down, the chance for this to get completely straight is absolutely, absolutely right there. Now, once that gets completely straight and the suspension comes up, you got a 50-50 shot. Either this joint's coming this way or this joint's coming this way. We obviously want it to go up and move the way the suspension should work, but if that sway bar link isn't long enough, it's giving you the opportunity to invert. And obviously, once this bad boy comes like that, uh, you're not gonna get it back up, at least on the trail. It's gonna be, you're gonna have to lift that whole suspension up, push that whole bar back up in there, and God knows what was gonna um, bend and everything like that as it, as it comes inverted. If it's in the rear, you know, you're talking hitting the axles or dripping some brake lines out or anything like that. In the front, it's gonna get tangled in the suspension. So that's, that's a quick way to even just look at with the Jeep sitting at ride height, you can, you can look at it right there and get a pretty good idea of if your sway bar lengths are the right length or not. And if I walk up to a Jeep that maybe somebody just bought and had a lift kit on it, and they're wondering, if I'm looking at it and this sway bar is angled down, more than likely the links aren't long enough. Either they have the wrong ones on there, they're not adjusted properly, or a lot of times we see them, they have the stock links, and you'll see that sway bar, you know, that angle's pointing way down. And that's, that's just a dead giveaway right there that we gotta get that taken care of. Now, if I'm building a custom suspension, and let's say I want to have a ton of down travel, I want this thing to you know drop out the bottom, that sway bar, obviously, this angle is gonna come up here, and I'll be running a longer link. Now, most of the suspensions you're gonna buy, they're either A, gonna come with adjustable links that you can, that they'll give you pre predetermined measurements that they know will work, um, B, they won't come with links at all, and it was either A, designed to go with another kit, and you were supposed to cater that to your needs, or it was just a cheap kit that they're just trying to kick out the door and they don't really care. Or, like I say, on custom stuff, the only way you're gonna find that out, though, is you're gonna get it all set up and get a pretty good idea, and then lift the whole suspension up, let that actual fall all the way down, and when that comes all the way down, what I'm looking for is a bend in it, a bend staying up there, so we know no matter what, as that suspension cycles and cycles and cycles, it's never gonna become inverted and then bend everything out there.